So I photographed a massive bubble in space using my backyard telescope and the result was really cool. This deep sky object is known as the Bubble Nebula, and it's in the constellation of Cassiopeia. It lies not far from the open cluster M52, so I'm able to actually image not only the Bubble Nebula, but the open cluster as well, all in the same field of view. Now the Bubble Nebula, as it's known, is an H2 emission nebula region, and it emits a lot of light in the hydrogen alpha. So I'm going to use special filters that are attached to my telescope to capture light in these wavelengths, specifically the H-alpha, oxygen-3, and the sulfur-2. This is called narrowband imaging. Light traveling through space reaches the front of the telescope, and it passes through the lens that's inside the front of the telescope. And that light then is focused, it's focused into a cone, and that cone reaches down to the filter wheel where the special filters are located. These filters, as I mentioned, they only allow certain light to pass through them. So if we use the hydrogen alpha filter as an example, only the hydrogen alpha light from the emission nebula reaches the camera sensor. All other bandwidths within the light spectrum are completely isolated or removed. That light then hits the camera sensor and is recorded digitally. This is what's known as an equatorial mount, and its movement counteracts the Earth's rotation to keep the object that I'm imaging fixed in the center of the frame. I use what's called an auto guider, and this consists of a guide scope that sits piggybacked on top of the main telescope and has a small camera attached to it. This guide scope is responsible for monitoring a star and keeping the telescope positioned on that star so that it doesn't move or drift in any way, which would otherwise blur or ruin the image that I'm trying to collect. So this is where the magic happens. Outside, there's a small computer located at the telescope and my main system inside communicates with it. From inside here, I can control everything the telescope does. I can tell the camera to turn on and cool down. I can switch filters. I can have the telescope slew to specific deep sky objects and take images. All of this happens automatically, run by a computer program called Nina. Let me show you how it works. This is the acquisition software that I use to collect the data through the telescope. This is called NINA. And this software controls the equipment at the telescope, which includes the camera, the filter wheel, the focuser, the mount, the guider, and so forth. It also has a sky atlas built into it that I can look up objects if I want to. I'll search for a galaxy here. Here's a galaxy, M31 and it shows me information about when it rises and when it transits overhead and when it sets. In this part of the acquisition software, I can set what's known as a sequence to run throughout the night. A sequence is a set of instructions that tells the telescope and other equipment what tasks to perform. So here we have the bubble nebula is the target and its coordinates. The telescope is then told to switch to the H-alpha filter, the hydrogen alpha filter, to slew and center on the bubble nebula and to start the auto guiding which will keep the bubble nebula centered in the field of view. For the remainder of the night the telescope is instructed to take a series of exposures using different filters the H-alpha, the O3, and the S2. So the bubble nebula is located in the constellation of Cassiopeia. It's actually at the northern edge of it up here. If we do a search for the bubble nebula. We can locate it in the planetarium software. There it is right there. 
So this is the area of sky that the telescope is currently pointed at. Here's the bubble and here's the open cluster M52. So here's our five minute exposure in the hydrogen alpha wavelength and we can clearly see the bubble nebula in the middle and over here we have the open star cluster. We zoom in we can see the bubble right here. There's the bubble in space. Now this data I collect hours and hours of it over multiple nights and then I'm able to bring it together and assemble it in a program called PixInsight. This program allows me to take all of the data that I've collected through the telescope over several nights and combine it into one image. And then I can process it and reveal the colors and the details and the intricacies of the nebula in this region of space. So this here is the narrowband data that I shot, which consists of the hydrogen alpha, the oxygen three, and the sulfur two and we can see the bubble nebula right here. There's the bubble nebula in the center of the image. So this isn't finished yet. It still has to be processed, but what I've done to demonstrate how I photographed the bubble in space was I've brought this data together. So I've combined here the H alpha, the, the hydrogen alpha, the oxygen three, and the sulfur two into this colorful image. And that's how I photograph the bubble in space. And it's really fascinating to think that we're looking at the past when we look up at the night sky. The light that we're seeing is ancient. It's from the past, the distant past. The light from the bubble nebula took 11,000 years to reach my camera sensor. And I was able to capture it. And that's just completely fascinating.